What's up guys, it's Joe the Pro here, back at it again with another video. Before this video starts today guys, I need you to please drop a like, subscribe, hit the post notification bell. So as you can see today, we have this nice nasty old ball lift that we're going to be rebuilding here. These are very rare now, They're uh, it's an uh, old vertical ball lift, obviously. Only the 8230s have had them. When the 8270s came out, they upgraded to PBLs, kickers, humpbacks, you name it. This one I pulled out of three and four last weekend. This one uh, had some duct tape or electrical tape or something put on it. I'm not too sure why. Um, a lot. Of, I know a lot of times I was told that they used to do this to try to make them uh, usable for a little longer when they went bad but um, yeah so I'm just gonna tear this one apart because it needs to be cleaned anyway I'm not rebuilding this one I will have a different video out for it but I'll just do the tear down in this video so I hope you guys enjoy and let's get started here the first thing I'm gonna be doing here is I'm gonna attempt to take these extra pieces off oh you're gonna need a Oh, there's a nice, nasty old cotter pin in there that's not even really secured. I'm just going to go ahead and pull this cotter pin out of here. It's one of the big ones. It's kind of hard. There we go. Yeah, I guess it's about time for that to come out of there. Garbage. Don't save junk, guys. So, these shafts usually come out pretty easily. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and toss all this in my parts cleaner. Uh, for some reason, when they installed these roll pins, whoever did was doing these before me, they would drill the hole like halfway through the shaft, but they wouldn't finish it. So, like, you know, any other normal person, uh, you would assume that you can just go on the other side of it and pound it out. But nope, the hole does not line up. And yeah, so you have to pull it out with vice grips on that side. So I thought that was kind of nice. Here, this is gonna be a little bit of a longer video, guys, but don't worry, I'll keep you entertained. I do it, I keep myself entertained pretty easily, so yeah. So. This is so stupid. Yep, it's just people half ass and stuff, you know. Not that hard, just drill, drill the hole all the way through. Oh, it might have been actually. Uh, the, I guess the hole was drilled all the way through, it just didn't line up on the other side of this cast iron piece. Don't ask me why, but you know, that's just how people do things around here. Or did things before I got here, but. So I'm gonna grab my hammer. Grab a punch. So um, never hit these shafts with just the hammer alone. Always use a punch because what happens is, as you know, these shafts can mushroom on the end and then you're gonna have a hell of a time getting it through that cast iron. Um, this one it does look like it's a little worn on this side, but I think it's, that's just from the shock absorber being there so long. So I'm gonna go ahead and try this side first and then hopefully it won't be too much of a pain, but. All right. Yeah, sometimes they're a little bit of a pain and I have to file them down on the edges a little. But this one wasn't too bad. You gotta also be careful if you're having a hard time pulling these shafts out, especially with the bigger one, with this shaft right here, or the cast iron, I'm sorry. If you're having a hard time pulling that shaft out, um, make sure with that longer one that um, it's not bending. Because they can bend and, and I'm guilty of it. I've broken one before, because I wasn't paying attention. I was just trying to get the shaft on out of there. And it was bending and I didn't know about it and it broke. So don't do what I did. So now the next step is to take your belt off. So how you do that, let's see if they put a lock nut on here. Oh, they did, look at that. So what you gotta do is get a nice, 
crescent open end wrench here. Uh, 9 sixteenths. Get on that nut and loosen it up a little bit. You, you should be able to finger loosen it after you break it loose a little bit, but you know, you know, you, if you guys have worked on these machines before, you know that doesn't always happen. In this case it is, because you know, I'm filming of course. That's why I like filming these. You're going to want to tighten this a little now. What it does, there's a loaded spring in here. I'll show you on this one. So these two pieces, th there's a, this spring is in the middle here, and that, sh that uh, bolt, that big bolt actually holds them together, so there's a lot of tension on that belt. That's how the belt has its tension. So, as you can see, it's pretty loaded. So you definitely don't want to take any of these screws out without relieving the tension. I'm guilty of this too. I've taken that out and wondered why I'm having so much trouble getting the bolts out. And then this thing went flying. So don't do that. Make sure you always relieve the tension off of this. But in order to do that, you gotta take the belt off first. Just wanted to let you guys know about that also. So right now I'm gonna tighten it actually. Cause when you tighten this clockwise, it makes the belt looser. All right, what you gotta do, you just gotta lift up one of the wheels. Kind of slide it off like that. There's one side. And the other side. Oh, and look at all that dust that was in there. Jeez. So now, this is the fun part. Now we get to take the shafts out of the um, ball wheels. I don't know if you guys have heard or not, but that can be a pretty big pain in the ass. Um, the last couple I've done, I've been pretty lucky knock on wood um, I'm hoping this one's the same way but if it's not you guys can watch me struggle so what I like to do flip this around here it's pretty heavy if you can't tell so I'll put it right in the vise oh yeah so look at that um, oh yeah so this is the one I had the belt not working so this spring on this side yeah it's locked up so I was having trouble with this one. This whole wheel's locked like that. So there's a one-way spring in there. So, cause that's what drives the ball lift. These pulleys right here. So the way it goes is this way, but they make them so there's one-way springs. So if one lane's on without the other, it, the lift can still work, but you don't necessarily need that belt running. So you can see this one could just sit while the, ball wheels idling but the problem on this one is this one doesn't do that that one wants to go too so we're gonna just take this one all apart and see what's going on here oh well, now you need a small punch oops and there's two roll pins there's one on this side one on this side i usually like to take each side off at a time they're usually not that hard to get out um, you, get, you can usually get away with saving the roll pins as well. But sometimes these things like to get seized on there. They shouldn't be, of course, but no, oh yeah, of course this one is. Oh, it's coming off. So, there you go. So that should just, shouldn't be that hard to get those off. Honestly, you're supposed to be able to just take those things off by hand, but obviously that wasn't like that in this case. So here's that one-way spring I was talking about. You gotta take this off first, and then there's these one-way springs in there. So, um, these are not the same for each side. If you get them mixed up when you put it back together, it's not the end of the world, but I try to like to mark them. Um, in this case, I'm not gonna mark them because they're not going, this one's not going back together because I already have my spare made up. So, I. You can tell the difference between them. Maybe if I get lucky, this one will be the opposite. Um, let's see here. Yeah, this one's the opposite. Perfect. So, if you guys look at this one, this is the one I just pulled out of the lift. This is one I was had in the drawer. So, you can tell these apart. So this one would 
go on that side and this one goes on this side. You can tell these apart because if you look, you can see that little, you can see where the spring ends right here. This little end piece right here. And if you look at this side, you can see, see how these are facing each other right there? So that's how you tell the difference between the springs. Because like say, you know, this one, this is the one that was in there. Oh wait, this is the one with the bad shaft on it. But anyways, see it doesn't want to, it doesn't want to let me spin it that way. Or it lets me spin it that way, but not the other way. But then, if I put this one in there, if I put that one in there, now it'll let me spin it that way, but it's the opposite. So that's how you tell the difference. So I'm just gonna pull this pulley right off like that. So now you got this little thing right here. So that's just an Allen head, um, it's 3 16 I think. Yeah, three sixteenths and the uh, nut. Yeah, that was stupid. The nut is a seven six. Teach you guys how to loosen a nut. You don't have to loosen it that much. Usually, just slides right off of there. So that's it for that side. Now I just gotta do the same process on that side. I'm not gonna explain. It, I'm just gonna do it. Oh, actually, I want to see what's wrong with this one because it's locked up. It's probably deceased. Who knows? So that's why that looks like that. I don't know if I've ever seen one would break yeah. like that. I gotta try to get it out of there. Let's pull this straight off of there. Yep, that's why you're supposed to put a ton of grease in there. Let's see, this one has no grease in it at all. Yep, broken spring. All right, so now here's the tricky part. So, I need my lock ring pliers. I don't have my good ones, so I have to use the ones that are in here. Yeah, these ones aren't bad either. So, basically, you gotta fiddle with this now. Garbage. And they don't make those anymore. So, that's so here. Now I got those lock rings off. Now, if you look on the shaft here, so these bearings are kind of like little, they have little lips on them, and they have these Impossible. Allen, they have these there hex set screws here. There's one. So I'll give you the size. These, this is a, an eighth, eighth inch. So you wanna loosen these up. So that'll help you get the shaft out. Tight. And now, oh, somebody did a real nice job with this one. Now you gotta loosen the big set screw on the ball wheel. So I'm not too sure. This isn't the right. This isn't the right bolt that's supposed to be in there. The wheels are loose on there. Got a call. Copy. Ball on five. Yeah, so this is not a problem. Don't worry about that when I get the wheel off. Alright, so as you can see, sometimes these wheels get seized on there. Um, usually you can get them loosened up with some WD-40 and uh, hammer. 
So, right now it's a fun part. Um, Shift. Seems okay. like it's a little seized Sorry. in there for that interruption guy. So I'll show you how to do that. There we go, now they'll come. Yeah. So, get her center as much as you can. It doesn't gotta be perfect. For me, it does though. Let's try to see if, how hard this is gonna be. Yeah. yeah, so this one might be a little seized. Some heat also helps if you have access to that. I like to stand on this because it gives me, I feel it gives me more leverage. There it goes. So, usually you get to loosen up one way or the other. I'm gonna file the sides of the shaft because we had trouble getting the other things off, so less trouble the better. Take a file. Well, no, I really gotta go crazy. Fun little. Wow, I got it off first try. That's an achievement for me. Smoother out. I doubt it. I doubt it. Come yeah. on. Finish it off. Damn thing in the holes. Ah. Safety glasses might be a good idea. There we go. Alright. So, those one came off a lot better than the other. So, same deal on this one. You got, um,. You got these little, you'll see when it comes around. This one's so dirty. It's kind of embarrassing that it was even still in there. Um, oh, that's nice. Oh, that was on the bottom here. Oops, sorry guys. Bottom of the vice got ya. So there's a lot, I, somebody went ahead and they were smart and drilled into the side of all these ball lift frames. Guys, it's kind of hard to get the Allen wrench in there with the side there. Same deal over here. Sometimes you're able to get in there. Often you're not, though. Nope, I had it. Yeah, maybe not. Stop wasting time, Joe. Same deal on this side. Find spot. Loosen her up. Just like that. So, so, see, this is what I do with the wheels that are worn out, because um, after a while they wear out in the center, and then if you try to clamp it down when you're rebuilding it, it's off center. So uh, this person used a big roll pin, but um, you can also use a small bolt to hold it in there, and that way it's not oh, I picked the pressing size. on one side of it or the other, it just stays centered. So, 
I, I, I do that a lot. I actually just put one in that I did that on. They, they run fine. Um, sometimes you're better off running them like that than uh, the normal way, because sometimes them bolts get loose. Up on my leverage stand. By the way, it really sucks if you hit your hand doing this thing. Come on. Let's get our. Yeah, this one's pretty seized in there, huh? There's a concern. It's going, it's going. Oh, it might be going through now. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Okay, through the bearing. I gotta get through the rest of that. To the wheel. Okay. Jesus. This is one of the worst ones. Taking a break. It's going, it's going. WD. Forty. going it's almost there i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you have any further questions or need me to clarify anything i'd be happy to so just let me know and i'll see you guys later have a good day and do it like a pro we'll see you in the next one thanks for watching